Hello everyone, my name is Dimitri and I'm the developer of Infernodus Visual AI Text Analysis Tool. In this video I'm going to show you how I make use of the fact that ChatGPT likes to hallucinate in order to generate new ideas and to stimulate creative thinking. We will be using Infranodus in this demonstration that visualizes text as a network knowledge graph that shows you the main ideas and how they relate to one another and then I will demonstrate how you can actually steer this hallucinatory quality of ChatGPT in a direction that may be interesting for you. So, in fact, I personally like that uh, it makes mistakes and that it's not always based on facts because it helps me see how I can develop my thought further. And I'm going to show you how it works in a second using this knowledge graph. Just to give you an overview of this approach in a nutshell, so basically Infranodus visualizes the text as a graph. As you can see here, the main terms are shown as the nodes if the terms are used in the same context, they will be shown next to each other, have the same color, and the more influential ones will be bigger on the graph. So for example, if you look at this graph here, you will see that uh, this is actually a voice note that I made using Otter AI, so I just exported it here. And I can see that the main terms are moment, state, time, interesting. Um, I was also speaking about hallucinations and how you can hallucinate interesting questions and so on. So this was just some ideas that I wrote down. And I will show you how I then use a combination of knowledge graphs and ChatGPT to develop these ideas further. So first of all, when I visualize it in Infranodus, I get a visual representation like this that helps me see what are the main topics inside, right? So this already gives me a really nice reflection back onto what I was thinking about. And what I can do also here is to turn on high-level ideas. And what it does is that it sends these clusters which it identified in the text to ChatGPT and asks it to generate topic names for them, right? So I can see that on high level I was thinking about time dynamics, so this one here, generating questions, exploring thought, playing with reality. I can also click here and see more topics that I was thinking about uh, idea creation, also some logo for some merchandise, AI connectedness, optimal structure, heart monitoring and so on. So it's quite a diverse range of themes here. Then. As my next step, what I like to do, and this is how I steer uh, the built-in chat GPT to generate some interesting ideas and to actually make use of the hallucinatory quality that it has, I go to the blind spots and what it does here is that it identifies the topics that it found in this text that could be better connected. And as you can see, if I click highlight here, I will see the gaps between them. So what I do is that I ask chat GPT to ideate to hallucinate in the direction of those gaps. So this is very important. I want to emphasize it once again. I don't just ask it to give me an answer to some question that I come up with in relation to this whole text structure which I have here. Instead, I ask it to focus on the gaps. So which two topics are connected but not so well connected yet. And then I ask it to hallucinate in that direction. And this is where actually the hallucination is good, is useful, because the whole purpose of it is to connect ideas in a new way, um, in a way that hasn't been done before. So this is what it's going to try to do now for me. I choose the gap, so in this case it's between play reality and exploring thought, and then I have a button here, AI generate question, and what it does is that it sends it to GPT-3 or GPT-4, uh, as you choose, to generate a question that would link those two topics together. So for example here it says how can exploring physicality through music, dance and repetition help bring back the kind of fun and imaginative gameplay that existed prior to the increased use of prepositions in gaming. So you could say that this is kind of like a very strangely formed sentence because it just took the keywords from these two uh, clusters of topics and tried to come up with something. But this is actually exactly what I'm looking for because the more, the, the stranger it sounds, the more interestingly I can develop this further, right? So for example, it connects language, gaming, physicality here. So this is very interesting for me. In fact, I'm going to save it as a note and then I'm going to try to develop this idea further. So I just click here and then it saves it into notes, which you can see uh, on the left here. So this is just for some ideas that I want to develop further. What I can do at this point is uh, when I generate this question, here, I can try to answer it myself. So I will say that, okay, maybe connecting them all together through some kind of game-like experience could 
generate a, a much more involved way of thinking about complex problems, right? How can we not only think about them through our mind, but also through music, movement, and even playing with language? So this would be an answer that I could give myself. If I like this answer, I can also write it in the notes here. So I will say that uh, combining music and movement with language games can help develop interesting experiences for learning. So I can do this manually and this is how I like to use the AI to not have it generate the answers for me but to hallucinate some questions that could uh, connect ideas in new and interesting ways, right? But I can also say that I want the AI to elaborate on its own questions. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to say, okay, now try to elaborate on this question, develop some idea uh, from what you just generated here, right? So then I'm going to send this question to GPT-4 and then it's going to try to answer this question to me myself. So there I have this human in the loop approach that I was showing in the previous video that I posted on brainstorming during, uh, using ChatGPT, but in this case uh, we already have a, like an existing text that we're working with. And so in this case it says uh, that we can combine it with the structure of repetition and gameplay uh, and encourage uh, kind of fun experiences and creative experiences during uh, our interactions. And here it says sensory richness into gaming while repetition for fosters skill refinement. So this is a really good idea. It's a combination of um, engaging all the senses into gaming or into learning experiences and also adding uh, repetition to help learning. So I'm going to save this because uh, this can be interesting for my research. So as you can see, it's totally hallucinating stuff that don't exist in the text, but this is exactly uh, what I wanted to do. And this is a big difference from other tools where you can upload uh, your ideas and then start prop prompting them because in this case you're just generating uh, what's already inside the text here. We're focusing on the gaps between the topics and we're generating ideas that are not yet in the text. We're using the text structure uh, to find what lacks inside and then we create prompts that would address those gaps and help us generate new ideas. So this is why hallucinations in this case is actually something good. And this, I think, is like a very interesting way of using AI as well. And to even make use of this thing that some people think is a fallacy, that it's not always factual, right? In this case, we actually want that because we want to create new ideas. So here in this case, we have another cluster, idea creation and play reality. So as you can see, these are two clusters that were in my original text but they're not very well connected. So again, I'm going to ask the AI to generate a question that would link them together in an interesting way. And I might have to reiterate through a few. Uh, so here, how can using text and data to generate ideas spark a new kind of physicality that bring back the fun of games, music and dance? So strange question, but I'm gonna save it because uh, the stranger it is, uh, the more possibility that I'm going to come up with uh, something interesting in relation to it. And then if I click elaborate and GPT-4 chat, here it's going to generate some interesting idea for me, which I can then use to uh, develop some ideas for this project I'm working on, right? So for example, here it's talking about integration, enabling a symbiotic relationship between technology that is shaping new physicality and reviving the joy of traditional entertainment form. So I'm just going to edit this answer, save it to my notes, and then what I can do is uh, once I accumulated uh, a few notes, um, I can select them and then summarize them or develop new ideas from them. So this is, you know, how you would reiterate here in this case. Again, highlight the network and then reiterate through different clusters of ideas to see which ones of them are not connected enough and then asking the AI to generate content that would bridge those ideas for you, right? So I usually like to manually look into the ones that are not so well connected and the ones that spark some interesting ideas just when I look at them, like idea creation and, lo and, and, and adaptive logo in this case. So this sounds very strange. The stranger it is, the better. Let's see what the AI will hallucinate 
uh, on this topic. Fractal optimization, using to give small-scale pocket loggers interesting written impulses to start ideas and writing based on similar da data. So, sounds strange, but because I know what, what it's talking about, it gives me an idea, okay, actually, what about using some printed loggers on merchandise uh, in a way that when you scan them, for instance, you could uh, engage into some short interaction that would actually make you learn something or generate new ideas. So, again, the stranger it sounds, the better, because it can stimulate you to think in a direction that you wouldn't have thought of before. So, this is why even by default, by the way, uh, we use GPT-3 here to generate questions because we want them to be formed slightly, uh, like, not perfectly, because it's in this imperfection that uh, human Im imagination can then fill in this uh, content with uh, some interesting ideas because the the point here is to generate new ideas and to be more creative so this is why we save this also into our list and continue developing them further so try out this approach on infranodus.com uh, blind spots generate uh, insights here and then reiterate through the gaps that you find and see how it works for you also, one thing that I want to mention is that if you uh, are done with all the gaps here, what you can also do is remove some of the nodes that you find are obvious to reveal the non-obvious part. So, for example, if I had enough uh, of information about time, state, moment, hallucinate questions, I can select all this stuff, hide it from the graph, and then it will highlight what's hiding underneath. So, it's kind of like I'm taking off the tops. Uh, layer of this content to see what's hiding behind, right? So maybe this word bring also, uh, and then I can generate high level ideas to see uh, what's going on here in terms of the content. And by the way, you should always aim for semantic variability diverse. This you can turn on if you click here, advanced mode. You also have this information here. So you want this to be in the green because it means that the structure of the text is diverse enough or optimally diverse in the sense where you can uh, pick different topics inside and uh, find gaps between them. Because if it's too interconnected, you will not have so many gaps. So this is why we use the sensor of topical diversity to show when the structure is optimal and to reach that you just remove nodes to make the network less connected until you get to the point where you feel like, okay, now you're dealing with the interesting, specific, nuanced enough topics that help you generate ideas, right? So here I have fractal optimization, generative dependency, data inference, AI connectivity. So great, it's getting much more technical. I go into blind spots again, highlight the network, and then, so for example, these two, they're, they're next to each other. Uh, they could be better connected, but I will reiterate and see if there is some more that are less connected. So for example, this dynamic play, visual deviation. Great, very strange. The stranger the better in my case. Let's ask the AI to hallucinate some interesting question. Okay, uh, which dynamic levels of physicality kind of fun and visualized repetition can be explored through music, gameplay and dance? Okay, great. So dynamic levels of physicality and repetition through dance and play. So this I can also save and explore further. If I don't want to have the question, I can also click here, next advice, and then I can ask it to actually develop an idea. So if I click on GPT-4 chat, it's going to come up with an idea, a ready-made idea that I can also use in my workflow. I like questions because I like to answer them and to engage in the thinking process, but if you prefer or if you don't have time, you can also use the answers and generate them like that. So here we go. Uh, then I switch to the different gaps and kind of reiterate through this process until I gather enough of interesting ideas and then usually I would make a new graph from them and then uh, develop them into a coherent narrative if it's a text that I'm working on or try to come up with a product idea if it's a product that I'm developing. Try it out on infranodus.com. Let me know how it works. If you have any questions uh, or comments, please leave them below and uh, also don't forget to subscribe so that you get informed about the new videos. Thank you very much.